In today's video, we're going to be talking about five big forehand mistakes that you could be making. I see many players making these mistakes that may be preventing you from hitting your forehand at your maximum power potential as well as optimal control. So if you see yourself in any one of these mistakes that I'm about to cover, then that's definitely something you're going to want to take a look at and address as needed. I'm Nicole Havlicek. This is Primetime Pickleball. Let's dive into today's topic. Missing one of our videos is like missing an easy put away. Don't let that be you. Subscribe now. Forehand mistake number one is having a big reach back on your backswing. Now you do need a backswing if you want to hit a forehand with the maximum power, but the problem comes into play when you do a big reach back with your arm versus a turn back. I'll cover the difference between these now. On this one here, I'm not fully turned to the side and therefore my body is not coiled up correctly. And so I'm mostly going to be generating power to, into the shot with my arm, which is not ideal because I'm not gonna be able to use my body. So I can't rotate into the shot because I'm not coiled up correctly. Therefore, I, there's nothing to uncoil. So I end up just arming it, which is not going to produce the maximum power you otherwise could. On this one here, my take back for my backswing is mostly achieved by the turn, and there's really not a whole lot of reach back. There is a little bit of a setback with my arm and my paddle, but to the untrained eye, it's deceiving, and it looks like a big backswing when in fact it's more of a turn back rather than a reach back. So to be clear, having a more pronounced backswing is not wrong. In fact, you need it. It's really just about how you're achieving that backswing. Are you doing it correctly? How it's achieved makes all the difference. Hitting your stroke like this, which is optimal for maximum power potential. My hips are coiled up, as are my shoulders. I'm well turned, so I'm very coiled up. My legs are loaded up. I can then use the ground to unwind into that shot. I can ultimately hit this one much harder because I can speed up the unwind using my whole body in an efficient unwinding sequence starting from the legs, then going into the hips, then the shoulders, which ultimately whips the arm around and through and into the finish. If I attempt to speed up my forehand out of a reach back backswing, then things are going to start to go astray very quickly. I will lose control at higher speeds. At lower speeds, you do have some control, which is why we do see this mistake happening. But the minute you try to speed it up and have more power in your shot, you're going to start running into problems. Overall, you will have more control at both lower and higher speeds with a turn back backswing rather than a reach back backswing. Forehand mistake number two is having a late contact. Now this is just a notorious problem in pickleball. I unfortunately see this happening all the time and it's a power killer as well as a control killer as well as it's just like really hard on your body and you're gonna maybe have some elbow and shoulder trouble as a result because you're just jamming up your joints and muscles when you're having a late contact. I often see this in combination with mistake number one. So someone might have a big reach back and then they're coming into contact and they hit it late kind of beside them. And so those often come together, but not always. I do see in many instances where there's late contacting without a big reach back. So it, it is a standalone problem as well. Now let's break down why this is so problematic in a way that's maybe a little simpler to understand because it brings it into like an everyday type of situation. Let's imagine you were pushing a heavy object and for you're doing it with just one arm because forehand is uh, just one arm. So you would push it like this, right? You would have your body mostly behind it, maybe a little slightly off to the side because your arm is to the side of your body, but, but really quite in front, right? You're not gonna do it like this, where you're reaching a lot to the side and your body is not behind it because you'll, that's a much weaker position. I can't get my whole body into it. I'm really pushing it with some very small muscles in my arm. That's a problem. And if you have a late contact on your forehand like this, then your power is going to suffer dramatically 
as well as your control and your body. So we want to stay injury free. So let's get that contact out in front so we can maximize our play out there in more ways than one. As helpful as we think the tips we're sharing in today's video are, there's more to achieving success on the doubles court. Want a complete A to Z step-by-step -step blueprint for playing winning doubles pickleball? Check out our dominating doubles system today. Go to doublesystem.com to learn all about it. Forehand mistake number three is a last second prep or a rushed prep. And when I say prep, I mean preparation for the shot. You don't want to be so early that you stop in the back part of your swing and are waiting for the ball, but you also don't want to be so late that you're making a very rushed backswing as you enter into contact. As I mentioned previously, you want to be initiating your shot with a shoulder turn. So you're going to be initiating that turn as soon as you start moving your feet and when you recognize where the ball is going. You're going to start tracking it over your non-dominant shoulder in that way rather than still having your chest facing forwards to the court as the ball is about to be bouncing. So again, with this late preparation or rush preparation error, you're limiting the use of your body. So it kind of always comes back to that. If you're limiting the use of your body, you're limiting the potential of your power. You're also increasing your risk of having a late contact when you're rushed. And again, just like previous mistakes, you're relying far too heavily on your arm during the shot. If you're waiting to do most of your backswing right as the ball is about to bounce, then you're really letting the ball play you rather than you playing the ball. On these well-timed shots, you'll notice a lot more of my shot prep has already taken place before the ball bounces. In fact, I'm initiating my shoulder turn, which is the start of my preparation, almost as soon as I have recognition of which side the ball is coming to. And that brings us to forehand mistake number four, which is not having a C motion in the early part of your swing. So one of the things I often see is players going straight back and then straight forward. And they have this stop in the back part of their swing before heading back forward. So this creates a hitch in the swing. You can't build up momentum this way, your rhythm breaks down, and there's just no fluidity to the shot. The correct motion is to have the paddle tip up as you make your turn back, and then you drop the paddle head down. This allows for good momentum built up as you head into contact. We often talk about a low to high motion on the ground stroke on both the forehand and the backhand side, but it's really turn high, then drop in, head into contact, so that's the low part, and then finish high and around. Choppy shots with a hitch in them, such as when you go straight back before coming forward, lead to a loss of power and consistency. I see a stop in the motion happening in different ways, but this straight back and straight forward action is one of the bigger offenders that leads to a hitch in your stroke. And last but not least is forehand mistake number five, not having enough turn on your backswing on the forehand. Now, this mistake is a bit unique because it's situational. Because in certain situations, you're not gonna wanna have a complete turn. But if that's your default go-to and you never get a complete turn, on any forehand, chances are that's definitely a mistake because the forehands that you wanna hit with tremendous power to try to get them by someone if you have like a short sitter or in a swinging volley or something like that, you do wanna have a complete turn. However, at times, if you have to run forward to the shot and are reaching for it, then you are gonna have less of a pronounced turn and backswing or if you're taking the ball on the rise because it's bouncing near the baseline near your feet, again, you're not gonna have a complete turn, you're gonna have a more compact backswing, bit less of a turn, and deal with it that way. Also, when you're returning, you may have time for a total wind up on your return, but you may not wanna do that because you're taking some pace off the shot, you're just gonna send it back deep so that you have time to get in behind it. You're gonna send it back with a bit more loft, not at top speed, maybe six out of 10 or seven out of 10 speed. So in that case, you're also going to use a more abbreviated backswing. So this one is not a mistake in all situations, it's situational. But again, if you are never getting a complete turn on any forehand ever, 
then you're going to want to take a look at that because there definitely are times when you want to get max power on your shot and in those instances you are going to want to have a nice strong turn on your forehand. So again, those mistakes that you're going to want to look out for on your forehand are number one, having a reach back rather than a turn back on your backswing. Number two, do you have a late contact? If so, you've got to move it forward. Number three, don't have a last second preparation. Number four is not building enough momentum in your backswing by the use of a C motion. And number five is not having enough shoulder turn when you should have some. So sometimes you're going to need to do without it, but many times you're going to want to have it. So to use it at those times. A big thank you to Taylor Bryant for his help with this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. For more pro player pickleball tips, techniques, strategies, and more on how to take your game to the next level, please visit primetimepickleball.com. You'll find a clickable direct link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, and until then, happy pickling.